Finally, for the last part of my quest guide to Soul War, this is everything you need to know about the final boss, Goshnar's Megalomania. First of all, this boss can only be accessed when you have 5 taints, so you must have completed all 5 bosses and if you haven't, check out my previous videos on how to do them. The first team will make the Dreadful Harvester teleport to you. The second team will give you a chance of summoning new ones from attacks. The third team gives you a 15% damage taken increase. The fourth one gives a chance to the creams of healing to full instead of dying. And the fifth makes you lose 10% of your current HP and mana every 10 seconds. The last one sounds as the most dangerous and it will indeed make you feel in danger throughout the fight. But the first tip is to get used to being on low mana. You will have to manage your mana being low and only use foods in the case you run out of mana entirely. Other than that, it's normal to be at a low percentage. As for the HP, on a mage, you should be on mana shield and have some life leash for a weapon or imbuements. That alone will be enough to keep your HP up without having to heal yourself. Now, in order to access the boss level room, you take the portal on the southwest inside the lobby of Solver. For this boss, as the EK, you will be taking mainly physical, death and life leash. And as shooters, it will be mostly death and physical. Now, as for the mechanics of this boss, well, it has all the mechanics from the previous bosses combined, but with less penalties. First, there is the aspect of power. This is a priority in the fight, since it has multiple reasons. First, it acts like the grief beast from the DS boss. You need to kill 4 aspects in order to make the boss vulnerable to attacks, for which you will be able to attack it for about 1 minute and 10 seconds. Secondly, is that when they die, their body turns into phantasma ooze. This thing has two functions. One is to get rid of the lesser splinters, which are also like the mechanic of the Deus boss with the ghosts. They go from grey to green to red and then are fed to the boss if you don't get rid of them. And this will make the boss slightly stronger. But additionally, when walking the flinches over it, they will turn into a dust, which is like the skull from the crater boss. This needs to be fed to the mouth on the south of the room, but this is needed less often than the greater boss, however, failing to do this will also make the boss stronger. For this, just like on the greater boss, I recommend the paladin to do this mechanic and as the EK, I toss him the dust. But for this boss, it takes a bit longer before the mod needs to eat the dust, and in general, it takes it less often. I still toss the dust towards the paladin and he still tries to feed it to the mod. But if it doesn't take it on the first try, then leave it here and go back to attacking. Then try again with the next dust. It's pretty common that the mob won't take any dust for the first minute of the fight, so don't be surprised. Now, the second function of the Phantasmal Loose is that when a player walks over it, it will reset their charges like the mechanic on the rotten boss. But this time, instead of the limit being 30 charges, it will be 36. And it also goes up slower than in rotten. However, at 36, you will start to take 5.6k death damage every 10 seconds seconds, which gets reduced with SSAs but it would be hard to manage. Because of this, it's important for the EK to control the room as much as possible, since by keeping it clean and doing the mechanic of getting rid of the flinches on time, it will give you time in between to have people remove their charges. What I like to do is that as the EK, I remove my charges at around 10, with one of the extra tiles that you usually get since at the start of the fight there might be two aspects alive. Then after that, I wait until I have close to 10 charges again and then I have the druid reset their charges, which should be in the low 20s by then. After that, I start to alternate between getting rid of the flimsy for the dust and then getting somebody to remove their charges. Alternating like this lets you continue to do the mechanic of feeding them all, but also resetting the charges at the same time. For this, I use the same order of the previous bosses, which for my team is EK, then ED, ED, RP and MS. But it is very important for the EK to be the one making the calls of when to reset the charges, since otherwise shooters might go for them back to back and then you fail to feed them all with the dust or get rid of the flinches too often. But keep in mind that when you start to alternate between using the Phantasma Luz for a flinchy and then a player, it will increase the chances of not making it on time to get rid of some flinchy. This will make the boss get stronger, but it's nowhere near to how the TS boss will get stronger by failing a phantom. This is very important to know, as it will give you room to allow yourself to fail sometimes. Obviously, the goal is to try and keep up with the mechanics as much as possible, but like I said before, they are slightly less punishing than the normal ones. My assumption is that failing to get rid of a flimsy gives the boss around 7% damage reduction, and failing to feed them all for too long is about the same, but the more flimsies you fail, it seems to get worse each time. After around the 4th flimsy miss, it was jumping near 25% reduction per failure, although this also includes not feeding them all as much, so even though you do have some 
some room to make mistakes, the more you do, the will compound harder and you will fail. Now, back on the topic of being on top of the mechanics, as the EK, you want to be in the middle of the room the entire time, so that when the aspect and the flimsy respawn, they will target you right away. And then whenever the aspect is about to die, you want to start positioning it on a way that you are able to move the flimsy over the remains with one step. For this, I like to position them next to each other, but this gets harder the more greens there is, so it is very important to keep the room under control as much as possible. Mages need to move around the room and then the EK grabs the greens when they walk near him, and then focus them down with AoE as much as you can. The order of attack priority goes from Aspect on first place, Boss in second place, Grim's third, and on last place, the Totems on the sides. These are like the fire fields on the event flow boss, but unlike that boss, where the mechanic was individual, here it is applied to everyone, so it's not necessary to have an order to step on the remains of the pillars. Usually we have the druids be the one stepping on them, in case it happens to be individual, however, I don't notice a difference from not stepping on them as the EK ever but I'm still not fully certain on what it does. My understanding is that it decreases the damage over time of the room. What I do know is that it's not as important as everything else, and because of that, we only have to mages attack the totems when there isn't anything else to attack. If there is a Grim, we focus on that instead, and then switch to the aspect at the moment it respawns. And whenever the boss is vulnerable to attacks, then it's necessary to be AOEing when the aspect respawns. You can alternate between 1SD and 1 Terraway as a druid, or in the case of sorcerers, use focus on ways the most, the EK and Paladin focuses down on the boss, and just from the AOEs alone, you should be able to kill the aspects on time. But whenever there is multiple greens, then focus even more on AOE with GFPs and waves. Next up is the mechanic from the Brachio Demon boss, which will be the Death UE on the room. This will happen way less often than the Brachio boss, usually from 1 to 3 times throughout the entire fight. It is very random, and when it happens, then there will be some white squares in the room, that by standing on them, you don't take damage from the Death UE. I like to prioritize myself as the EK on it, especially if I have multiple monsters, since that means there shouldn't be much or anything at all in the shooters. However, sometimes as the shooter, you might want to stand on it as well. Just be aware that if the EK goes for it, then the AoE damage from the stuff on him might end up being worse than the Death UE. Overall, this is a very situational decision based on the rune at the moment and the mana of the mages. Now, the next mechanic, the boss at around 60% of HP, will turn blue and stand still on his current position, and after 8 seconds he will cast a high damage wave to the sides of him. Whenever this phase happens, everyone must move away from him and stand diagonal to him. Keep in mind that he's still attackable on this phase, so you can get extra attacks on him. Just pay attention and make sure to not be in front of his waves. And lastly, the boss can cast fear as well. He does it less often than the event flow boss, but this is still problematic. Even though it will be mostly on the EK, whenever this happens, make sure to go back to the middle quickly and focus on grabbing the monsters. In the case an aspect spawns during this time, whoever has the aggro of it should bring it to the EK. And that is all you need to know for this boss. Basically, prioritize killing the aspects, control the room with AoE, and by attacking the greens when they are the only ones attackable. When the boss is vulnerable, then alternate SDs and waves. Position the flimsy in an easy way to get rid of it, and in case you struggle, then make sure to call for help, since somebody can take the aggro of the flimsy and walk it over or even block a green away. Also be aware of the charges of your team, and start resetting them in advance to avoid getting them to 36, while making sure to alternate getting rid of a flimsy in between. And whenever the dust is up, try to feed it to the mob once, and if it doesn't take it, then leave it there. And only attack the pillars on the sides when there is nothing else to attack. Now lastly, if you succeed, then you will be able to take the portal on the north of the lobby, which takes you to the safe area where you can open the chest for your guaranteed soul war item. This can only be opened once, so best of luck to you. And the teleport next to the chest will take you to the depot of the S. This is useful for after finishing a hunt in soul war, you are able to get to the city faster. And in the unfortunate case that you fail the final boss, you will lose two of your things and two bosses at random. Say shards to the NPC by the lobby and he will tell you which bosses you are missing. If you lose hatred, spite or cruelty, then you have a good chance of doing them again and getting back to fight things. But the final boss has a cooldown of less than 3 days. And if you lose malice or greed, then I recommend to not try doing them, since both of these bosses are incredibly difficult with 3 things, especially malice. In that scenario, you will have to wait 14 days from the moment you got the last thing, 
and then you will be able to get rid of them by saying thanks to the NPC. And when you are back to normal, you can attempt the quest again from the start. I really hope none of you go through this, but in the case somebody dies in the final boss and the team is still able to finish the boss within some time, then they will still get the reward. So I recommend to still try and finish the boss as 4 men, but only if that happens towards the end. If it happens too early, then I don't think you will have the damage to kill the boss with 4 players. With that said, that's all I got for this video and series. If you found it helpful, consider subscribing, and if you want to support the channel, consider donating TCs to Goody Donation. Thank you for watching, and a special thanks to Tuna Hero, Tortoise Slasher, and Elber. See you next time.